I spent a few days last week at Chuck Bender's school, the Acanthus Workshop, taking a class on molding planes with Matt Bickford of MS Bickford Planes. This was a great opportunity to get with a plane maker to learn all the ins and outs of cutting moldings. Matt demonstrated several techniques and how the planes work, and really his principles start with the rabbits. These rabbits are laid out very strategically as a way to steer your hollows and rounds. You get this beautiful twin shaving effect as you're cutting the hollow of a molding. And basically when those twin shavings merge into one shaving like you see here, that's your depth stop. You know that you've cut the full width of the profile and really you can stop cutting. From there we started cutting our own and Matt moved around the class to basically give advice, help us tweak the hand planes, and just be supportive. Um, ultimately it was a great day to play with some phenomenal tools and work with Matt's tools. So I wanted to show you kind of how it all works. This is obviously drastically sped up. Again, starting with the rabbits. I'm cutting a fillet, or excuse me, a, a cove that's flanked by two fillets, which means I need to lay out a rabbit to mark both of those fillets, as well as a rabbit inside the cove to help me steer the hollow that is going to shape the final cove profile. This is really the hard work of the moldings. The rabbit plane does all of the work, and then there's maybe 10, 12 passes of the hollow around to actually form the curves. Most people would probably do this on a table saw, but I'm a glutton for punishment. So now I come in with a hollow, and you see how it rests on those rabbits, which I like to call Bickford rails, because it guides the molding and it forms your curve. You basically work until that little groove in the center, or those twin shavings become one shaving. Draw a little line here just to mark my projection, how deep I want that fillet, and I cut the rest of the way down to finish up that fillet. The plane can be positioned up or down in order to create a more laid back or more vertical profile, but ultimately, if you stick to your layout lines, you end up with something that looks like this. And there's no sanding needed on this molding. It is ready for finish, and that's what we're all about. So we made a bunch of different profiles from simple coves to reverse OGs. Uh, that one's a particular favorite of mine in furniture. Add a fillet to the top of that and you get a somewhat more classical look. We made a couple of really interesting ones involving snipe spill planes to get that little bead there. Made I don't know how many moldings but these are the six that I brought home with me. And then we finished up with a final project which is a multi-radius and bead uh, picture frame made out of mahogany. Ultimately we ended up with a heck of a lot of shavings at the end of the day. So what was Chuck Bender doing during all this since it's his school? We're in there working on molding planes and He's building some sort of wall to hold his dust collector in the other room using cut nails. It was a great day. I couldn't be happier with how everything came out. So if you want to learn more, head over to msbickford.com to learn all about Matt, his planes, and check out his blog, Musings from Big Pink, to learn basically everything he taught in our class, how to lay out all these moldings and how to cut them. Now, if you're interested in his planes, I advise you to contact him now. He has about an eight-month waiting list to make these planes, and probably that list got a little bit longer because there's a few of us in the class, maybe me, that put in our names for our own starter set of planes. Check it out, msbigford.com, and thanks for a great couple of days, Matt.